Welcome to Empowerment Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Friedman, and as always at Empowerment Radio, we are addressing some of those fun things about life. Some of those things that when we really look at them closer, maybe are making life more meaningful and certainly more interesting. Because how often do we just go into that autopilot way of going through days without really ever being aware of how we feel or how our life is going. Sometimes we just notice, wow, it's already summer and I don't really know how the time flew by. Well, maybe because we didn't stop, maybe because we didn't reflect. And so this hour today is one of those opportunities just to sit down, have a cup of coffee or cup of tea and have a little moment of introspection and reflection on what's going on and what is possible for all of us. Now, let me ask you before I tell you the title of the show, how happy are you? On a scale from 1 to 10. What is your average level of happiness since the beginning of this year? Well, maybe until now you haven't even thought about it. But this is what the show is about. How can we train ourselves, especially our subconscious mind, to be happy no matter what? And I think that is really, uh, you know, the, the goal of all of us, right? Not just to make it through life, but ultimately to be happy. But how can we do this? Now, I went with uh, my wife, Danielle, uh, on 11 trips to Egypt. And one thing is what I loved about Egypt was that friendliness and that hard openness of the Egyptian people. We often had a little boat that we went down the Nile and stopped along the way on you know, little villages and uh, had conversations with people and went into their houses and had meals together. And, and one thing that really was striking me is how little those people had and how content and happy they appeared. And maybe that was just my impression but i felt just like the little joys you know seeing us strangers and uh, sharing a few jokes that was lightening up their day now there is this filmmaker ricky ray who did the documentary 10 questions for the dalai lama and he had a very similar observation while he was traveling through india and, and other parts of the world What he found is that often the poorest people were happier than those who seemed to be very prosperous. So he said that he encountered so many more smiles from those living in slums than from the people who were in rather privileged homes. Now, I mean, logically, it would seem the opposite, right? I mean, if you are facing poverty and uh, potential danger, Uh, without having food or shelter, well, you should be anxious and fearful. But maybe there is something about when you have very little, that you also have very little to lose, and that you have a greater sense of appreciation for the small things you have, and conversely, when you have a lot, and you have a lot accumulated or a lot achieved, that maybe that energy that you spend in maintaining or even having more makes you so entangled and identified with these external aspects of your life that you lose the connection to what it means to be content and happy. Well, I'm not saying that now let's get rid of everything we have and have a complete ascetic lifestyle and, uh, you know, basically live in little huts in the woods to be happy 
But what I'm saying is that we may want to shift our perception on what makes us happy and maybe also use our mind to help us find greater happiness. Now, besides that happiness feels good, happiness also is incredibly healthy. There was a Harvard study that started actually uh, right after the Great Depression, somewhere in 1940 or something like that, and it um, uh, was observing, the goal was to observe the life of 268 Harvard sophomores. And eventually it got extended to 1,300 of their offspring, just in the hope to get some clues on what really leads to a healthy and happy life. Now, they, of course, you know, researchers, scientists thought about, well, it must be what you put into your body. It must be your genes. It must be your IQ or anything like that. Well, it turns out that what makes people happy are close relationships, much more than money or fame. And that actually when people were happy and had a sense of contentment, that was delaying their mental and physical decline and was a much better predictor of a happy and long life than the social class or the intelligence or even the genetic coding. So happier also means healthier. So how, how do we create happiness in our lives? What do we do? Because let's face it, we often get stuck in worry and discontent. Somehow we are more programmed and primed to look for the problems in life, for the faults, for the shortcomings, for the pitfalls, even though there may be really no reason to worry and more reason to celebrate what we have and who we are. But then again, we have to just admit that emotions don't necessarily make any sense, right? I mean, often we are feeling things that shouldn't really be there and we are not feeling things that we should feel and so that illogical way our emotions are has one reason which is it comes from the illogical place in our mind which is our subconscious now i often talk about the subconscious i really deeply love and it appreciate our subconscious but it does have a big flaw, which is it just does what it has been doing for a long time until we are teaching our subconscious to do something else. Now, the subconscious, when it creates these worries and concerns and, and fears and looking for the what-ifs, it does that not just because it's bored or it wants to torture us. It does that because it is focusing on one of its main agendas, which is to protect us. So when you are you know, growing up in a maybe unstable uh, surroundings, uh, when you have experiences of trauma, but maybe also just of rejection, people made fun of you, you got embarrassed, you put yourself out there and you failed, you had dreams that dashed, you got maybe betrayed. These are very common experiences in everybody's life. So if you went through those experiences, your subconscious says, oh, I need to jump in and I need to be the protector here. And so we go into that self-preservation or survival mode. Now in that mode, your subconscious is programmed to anticipate and to look for the shoes that can drop or the people that can hurt. And happiness and ease and lightness and joy are not really on its radar. So that is a reason why happiness is not necessarily that what the subconscious is looking for because it tries simply to keep us unharmed and alive. Now, the good news is there is another gear, another a uh, prime concern of the subconscious, which is to make us happy. So it actually wants us to experience joy and purpose and fulfillment, but it hasn't necessarily been trained to do that. 
So can we, and that's the question for this show today, can we actually train our subconscious mind to look for happiness? Can we train our subconscious mind to create happiness and shift out of the survival mode? Well, I can tell you one thing. The answer is yes, and we just have to look at the how. But the beauty about the subconscious mind, and this is one of the things that I really appreciate about this part of our mind so much, is that it is eager to learn and it is eager to serve. It really wants us to get the most out of what it has to offer. We, the conscious beings, just have to find a way to train and connect to the subconscious to make that happen. And that is what we will talk about after the break. So stay tuned. We will be right back. Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. We're talking about being happy and how we can train our subconscious mind to create more happiness. Now let me ask you a few questions just to contemplate a little bit. So on average, do you feel more neutral more stressed, or more happy and content? Well, if you're saying I'm feeling more neutral, that may be good. Maybe you are a Zen master, or maybe you are in that more unconscious autopilot mode, and you may be more in your head than in your emotions. So try to figure out throughout the day, maybe every two hours, What is my emotional set point right now? Almost like taking the temperature. Just going to get more in touch with what you're feeling. And also, am I happy or not? If you're saying you're more stressed, you're obviously more in that survival mode. And that's, you know, what we want to talk about, how to shift out of that. And if you feel like happy and content, you're doing something right. The question is only, and that's my next question for you. What makes you happy? Have you ever figured out what does bring you happiness? Is it your job? Is it your friends, your family, your kids, your dog, something you eat? What does bring you happiness? Have you looked into those opportunities? And if not, that is one of those great practices we will talk about later. Now, for those of you who say, I'm a little nervous when I think about happiness. What is that about? I had that actually too. I told my wife years ago that I think it's hard to stay in that place of happiness. Somehow it feels so fleeting. It's just always going away. And and there is something about happiness that can bring up that, that equation of happiness meaning complacency. Happiness meaning that's a status quo and now we are not moving anymore. Now we're going to become potato chip eating monsters watching uh, TV shows all the time. And that's not really what happiness is about. You can be happy and still have drive and motivation. In fact, it can give you motivation and creativity to find even more reasons to be fulfilled and happy. And then... When you think about that sense of postponing happiness, how often do you do that? I'll be happy when I get in shape, when I have my promotion, when I have more money, when I'm on vacation, when I'm in a relationship. How often do we push happiness in front of us, like dangling it like a carrot that somehow we never really are able to enjoy? So when you think about happiness and those questions, you may see that your relationship with happiness can use an upgrade. And that's also true for James, who just wrote, I don't like the word happiness. It puts pressure on me to always be in a good mood. What if I'm just not wired for being happy? Well, very good question. Now, there is really, last time I checked, no wire inside of us. And it's also something that would say that we cannot change, which obviously is not true. 
Now, there may be a negative association with the word happiness, maybe because there was, you know, like in a client of mine, you know, she had watched her parents being happy by having these wild parties, inviting tons of people, getting drunk, laughing loud, being inappropriate, and that was what the parents displayed as happiness. And so my client said, no, I don't want to be happy because that is what happiness is about. And I reject that. You know, some people reject showing emotions because they had maybe an overly emotional parent. And so there is also something for us to find out. What does actually the word happiness mean to us? Does it bring up any positive towards feeling or is it something like mm, I need to stay away from it and maybe we need to then figure out another word that is more drawing us in than the word happiness I just talked to a client who said happiness sounds too trite or too light and it doesn't matter it's more about the emotion it's not about the word it's not about that what we associate it's that what really it makes us feel when we have that sense of happiness because there is a natural ability inside of all of us to enjoy and there is a natural desire inside of all of us to relax to connect to open our senses and our heart to let positivity and possibility in so we all have that but sometimes we are simply either denying ourselves to have that or we're feeling like well we can't have it because we have to focus more on staying safe and that is again that survival pattern of the subconscious mind now one day I'm going to talk in detail about the subconscious mind and how we can connect to it and all these wonderful things but one thing about the subconscious mind is that it is incredibly powerful and depending on what it makes us focus on it shifts and changes everything so let's say you wake up in the morning and for some reason you're anxious for no reason your subconscious is on alert or you go to work and you feel like ah, I'm not really having a good day. I'm probably going to, you know, get rejected or judged. Well, or you feel already that, you know, today the shoe going to drop and something bad's going to happen. And what will happen is exactly that, what you're expecting. You're going to feel rejected, maybe because your colleagues forgot to ask you out for lunch or your goldfish is turning its back on you when you enter the room. And you will feel like the other shoe drops because you spilled milk or got stuck in traffic and came five minutes late to work. Your subconscious with its expectations and with its subconscious filters, which basically are letting in everything it believes will happen and is blocking out everything else that has been happening, are literally creating your reality. So most of us that have been anxious know in that anxious mind you are focusing only on the things that are confirming your anxiety. When you feel insecure, I mean, I often talk about this experience of giving a talk or doing a workshop and then getting the, the feedback forms, 50 grade one, one is feeling bored, that's the one I focus on. That's the one that feels like, oh yeah, oh my God. That is when you feel your subconscious mind is distorting your experience based on these expectations. So what can we do to get your subconscious and its filters shifted out of that looking for the negative and looking for that what can harm us and looking more for that what is enjoyable and that what can bring us happiness? Now, one of the first steps you can do is expand your happiness awareness. You could also say your definition for happiness. Because in the past you may have felt, okay, happiness is when you have that 72 degree room temperature, 
you have only positive people around you, a big smile on your face, you just had a delicious delicious meal in your tummy, got a promotion, may have won in the lottery, you know, all those events that you thought they need to come together and then you're going to feel happy. But that's not really what happiness is all about because then that would mean that we only have very small moments where we can feel happy. It's like saying, you know, you are, I only like super spicy food and then, you know, everything else is rather bland. But there are so many forms of happiness that can be found everywhere in any time. We just need to widen our perspective and therefore also widen the perspective of the subconscious mind. So maybe you can include in the umbrella of happiness being content, at ease, in the flow, present in the moment. You can find joy when you watch a dog playing. You can find that really sense of, uh, yeah, deliciousness. When you're zipping on your first cup of coffee in the morning, you can find that deep connectiveness and maybe sense of also uh, intimacy when you have a deep conversation with your spouse or a friend. There is a lot of happiness to have, but what's important for you is to just see that happiness is overall a state of well-being, a state of alignment, a state of contentment, a state of enjoyment. And that state comes in all different kinds of intensity and degrees. Some of the happiest moments may be after a long day and you can finally go and sit down and put the feet up or hit the pillow and let your eyes fall close. That can be a wonderful, happy moment. So defining happiness and making the range of what is happiness wider is almost like giving your subconscious a new map. Because the old map was avoid frowns, avoid words of judgment, avoid risks, avoid rejection. All of those things that the subconscious was basically looking for. Now you're starting to create a new map with new destinations and new treasures to collect every day. Now, wonderful idea, but how do you transport it now from the idea into the action through the subconscious mind? That's what we're going to talk about after the break. Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. How can we be more happy? Isn't that a big question? Million dollar question? Well, there are ways. Happiness is, in some ways, something we can learn to be. And in some ways, it's a skill. It's not just luck. And it's certainly not dependent on all the circumstances. And it is also not something that some people can do and some can't. We all can. Now, if you have any questions about this topic, call in. 800-930-2819. Or type on transformationtalkradio.com a question into the chat box. And I'm happy to address it. Maybe you have a really good tip on how to be more happy that we all would love to hear and benefit from. Now, how do you transfer now this wider perception and perspective and happiness into the subconscious mind and then put it into action? Or, in other words, how do you change a watchdog into a truffle dog? Now, you know, the truffle dogs are those dogs that are able to just find these delicious, they also call it the black gold of the kitchen, mushrooms or fungi, and they get trained early on. And what they do is they put you know, the truffle oil uh, first uh, into maybe the, the bottle of milk they get fed in. And then they get it uh, into a, a ball that they're playing with. And eventually it becomes just that idea that uh, 
truffles is something fun looking for truffles is a game and that's how they train it now we can train our subconscious in very similar ways you know when i was in medical school i had a crush on this really beautiful girl who had long dark brown hair and uh, and i was in munich germany and i went on vacation to new york and saw the same girl at least 10 times walking down fifth avenue and broadway and so on because my subconscious just was fixated on that girl which of course still was in munich but it just saw anything that looked familiar simpler or similar to when we are uh, searching for a home and then we see the for sale signs everywhere or you want to buy a car and then you see it on the road all the time even in your color that is what priming the subconscious does so if you are priming for happiness you are making your subconscious look more for ways to find that happiness so f- what you can do is make a list of at least 10 situations in the past where you felt happy as in content joyful at peace satisfied light relieved whatever those things are that you would want to really have more of in your life and while you make that list you really get a little bit connected with the emotion of what you felt and then for the next two weeks you pick every day at least one of those memories on your list maybe in the morning it's a game you close your eyes you fully submerge yourself in that memory in how you had felt during that time you visualized how it was you let your senses and your emotions bubble up from within and for your subconscious that is like the truffle oil for the subconscious it feels like oh okay this is what feels good this is what you want and then your subconscious has an idea it took a whiff it got an eye I got a direction and then during the day what you want to do is to keep your mind your senses and your heart open for your subconscious to detect situations or encounters where you can experience those forms of happiness you literally are doing exactly that what you do when you decide to make a purchase or when you fall in love you are telling your subconscious this is what i want more of and your subconscious will help you find it it's a little bit like a treasure hunt and the more you practice and the more you're feeding back to your subconscious that this is actually something that feels good and well done it's like you know giving your truffle dog a a pet or or a treat the more your subconscious will be eager to please you in that way now this is kind of you know the the first step of of getting your subconscious focus on something else it's almost like you know now you are having another way of going through the day rather than looking for the stumbling blocks and pitfalls you're looking also for all those things that actually have in the past made you happy and can make you happy again now then you can also practice happiness in a more active way that goes even beyond that letting your subconscious search for it so this is another and maybe a more even engaged way of teaching your subconscious that happiness in whatever form is really what you want to have as a stronger foundation in your life and for that there are two ways to do this one is through awareness and the other one is through action and the first one is where you simply practice something that's so hard for most of us which is to slow down and move from your head a little bit closer to your heart so rather than rushing through the day and having your to-do list always dangling in front of you you're actually choosing at different times maybe every couple of hours to just reflect on what had happened the two hours before 
and notice those moments that felt good or maybe the moment as it is arising feels good and as i said before this can be as simple as having a sip of coffee this can be as simple as just feeling like oh i sent this email that was really hanging over me for a long time finally off that feels like a relief i'm happy this is probably not something awe-inspiring that you're going to discover, but it still feels good. And here for your subconscious, it is not important what ripple effect it makes for human mankind. What's important for the subconscious is that it feels good and right to you. It can be as simple as when you are listening to your favorite song on the radio, or you met a colleague in the elevator and you had a nice chat about the weekend and you felt connected or maybe you got something done with much greater ease than you expected or you had a great uh, you know creative uh, session with uh, your wife on where to go on vacation or whatever it is you just notice and collect those moments that are there that you are actually able to feel but unfortunately then usually they are just crowded out again because you're off to the next thing and you're not able to slow down and take them in you know how we unconsciously eat often and how we even maybe read the newspaper or watch tv while we are putting some delicious you know bread cheese salad whatever it is into our mouth and we don't even notice what it is that is what we often do during the day we are not aware of what feels so good because all we are focusing on is either moving on to the next thing on our to-do list or whatever problems we had and that's again our subconscious going through its self-protective mode so slow down and open your mind and of course your heart now the second approach to practicing happiness is about creating those joyful experiences that are evoking those happy emotions so i for example have we have a few horses and i love these animals i love animals in general but uh, i three times a day go out of the office just for a few minutes and feed them some carrots and yeah, they come to you from the field they're happy to see you and you have a little interaction and just as you i mean they're not like dogs you know wagging the tails and rolling on the ground too because they're so happy that you're there they're a little bit more subdued you know but you still see how there is something really warm about them approaching you and how it feels just nice when they are with their big huge warm lips or grabbing the carrots out of your hand that is a moment of happiness you may find a moment of happiness during the day if you leave the office and just walk around the block and you know have a little fresh air you may have a moment of happiness when you are watching for five minutes a comedy skit on YouTube or read something in an inspirational block what I would like you to do is to teach your subconscious it's almost like a muscle that you're strengthening on how you can be actively involved in the creation of happiness contentment joy all of those wonderful things now there has been a study that showed clearly that the healthiest happiness based on what it does to your immune system and your white blood cells is not to make more purchases and make uh, amazon richer the healthiest um, way of being happy is actually to be of service to share yourself in whatever capacity to have a sense of a contribution so that may be as simple as watering your plants this can be giving a homeless person a dollar and just having a little chat with that person it can be also that you are maybe making a plan to getting more engaged in 
some kind of a good cause, whatever brings you then a sense of, yes, I am doing, I am actually of service, I am helping. If you see a bug on its back and you're turning it around so that it can walk away, just be open to see that you are creating happiness also to being an integral part in that web of life and being a part that is aiming to making a difference and sharing yourself with that way. So there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. That's a quote by Thich Nhat Hanh. And when we come back, we'll talk more about how to make happiness the way and how to not slide back into this survival mode. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Happiness Channel, Empowerment Radio, talking about the subconscious and going into happiness mode. Uh, and before I get unhappy with myself, I will just mention two things that I usually forget to mention. If you want to find out more about my work, my offerings, my individual sessions, the seminars, book, CDs, etc., go to thefearandanxietysolution.com and it is about overcoming fear and anxiety, depression, and other uh, challenges that keep us from being more happy, content, and in a place of self-appreciation by addressing those deeper root causes on the level of the subconscious mind. So if these are challenges that you have, check out the website, thefearandanxietysolution.com. Also, visit the YouTube channel, Dr. Friedman Schaub. It is now with over 160 videos, guided meditations, webinars, and so on. Subscribe to it because there is always a growing number of new material that comes on, including the replays of the empowerment radio shows. So go to YouTube, sign up. I would be happy to also answer any questions you may have from there. Helen Keller. Wasn't she just an amazing inspiration for all of us? And she said, when one door of happiness closes, another one opens. But often we look so long at the closed door that we do not see the one that has been opened for us. And I think that is exactly the challenge with that switching from thriving and looking for happiness mode back into survival mode. You know, you may have been going through days of feeling buoyant and excited and you're still feeling like, yeah, life is good and in the flow and boom, something happens, something you don't like. A bill, maybe, uh, you know, someone was judging you. Maybe there was uh, something that you really felt like was a shoe dropping. And then you feel like, well, see, it's not safe to be happy. Happiness actually made me not be on guard, made me complacent, made me more vulnerable. Let's forget about happiness, happiness, and let's focus more on survival again. Well, unfortunately, that's not true because being in that constant stress, worry, anxiety mode doesn't make you safer. It actually drains you. It clouds your mind. It doesn't allow you to see more calmly and assess more clearly a situation. It lets you overreact. So whatever your mind is telling about you should be more worried constantly, it is not a safer way to be, let alone talk about what it does to your physiology. Happiness is certainly much healthier for you but again, your subconscious needs to be taught that. And so you need to teach your subconscious that being happy is safe. And so there are a few things that I would like you just to consider in that regard. For example, and that's a big one, the letting go. You know, one of the survival modes the subconscious has is to hold on. Hold on, hold on, don't let go, don't lose. Well, Letting go is enjoyable. Letting go is safe. Letting go can be happy. It can be as simple as 
enjoying a sneeze or going to bed when you're tired or not to get too graphic but when you go to the bathroom sometimes that feels also like oh heaven so it can just be this letting go which can bring a happiness through relief and release and your subconscious can be taught that the enjoyment of letting go the greater freedom the the room to breathe is incredibly safe so when you have those experiences simply repeat in your mind this is enjoyable i deserve to be happy this is safe so that your subconscious makes that connection same thing about taking a risk so many times we are in that survival mode because we're staying in the comfort zone and never really venture off so find happiness through trying something new. And that can be as simple as just, you know, driving a different route to work. Or maybe having another drink rather than your usual, you know, double espresso. Or it could be just that you are also allowing yourself to wear a little bit something different than your black attire to work. Whatever it is, venture a little bit out Find the joy in it and teach your subconscious this form of happiness is also safe. Just as it's safe to have more self-expression, talking more freely, or being more in a place where you allow yourself to be visible, or similar to that, trying something new, just doing something that may challenge you because it may be a class or it may be a new hobby or it may be joining a group and in the past you would have not allowed yourself to do this but see that it's not only bringing you happy that it's also safe letting go of resistance there was a study that showed that when workers on an assembly line were constantly thinking, I'm bored, this is stupid, what am I doing here? It was making an eight-hour day pretty much 16th hour long. But if they were making little games in their mind, how fast they can something, you know, assemble or how they can be better than the person next, just like, you know, a little fun competition, the day flew by. So letting go of resistance to whatever it is, letting go of judgment, of yourself, of your circumstances, of others, is also a way of opening up to more happiness, and it is safe. Shifting into gratitude, then rather than wanting more, another way to find more happiness that your subconscious needs to associate with safety. Happiness through looking forward to something rather than expecting the worst. It's another way that your subconscious is shifting directly out of its mode of survival into feeling it's safe to enjoy and it's safe to be happy. And lastly, happiness through letting go of that constantly criticizing yourself and shifting into self-appreciation. Once you do that, Remember to tell yourself and your subconscious it is safe and feeling the safety in it. Doing what you like is freedom. Liking what you do is happiness. And that's what Frank Tiger said. And I really feel this can be something we can take for our entire life. Just really knowing that we always have the freedom to like who we are, like what we have, and also like what we do. And this we have happiness, more a constant flow in our life. Until next time, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for constantly willing to go a little bit deeper and learn a little bit more about our potential. Until next time. I'm your host, Dr. Friedman. Goodbye.